Hello, in this video I'm gonna walk you through the financial model Excel template. I will show you the main inputs, the core outputs, reports and charts. So let's get started. On the dashboard you are able to input core inputs, see the core financials and core charts related to the model. Let me show you how assumptions wallet works and I'll walk you through the each one. The first assumption is will the sensor provide food? You can select yes or no. In case if you will select no, the price would not work, but let's say it's yes, and the daily price per child can be $3 for example. Will the sensor provide nappies? It can be again yes or no, let's say yes, and the cost will be $2. Will the center provide a bus? Yes, and the price per child can be two dollars, for example. Will you have any government compensation? Let's say no, so you can just zero out the daily price. Wages bonus. Will your wages have some bonus assumption? So let's say yes, it can be five percent months. Will your wages go up? say yes it will be two percent per year will your rent go up Let's say yes it can be two percent per year for each of these assumptions you have this node which will help you to understand what calculation this assumption will drive so it's just easier for you to understand the next section you can set up your main revenue groups or streams by default it's broken down by nursery junior toddlers, senior toddlers, break kindy and kindergarten. But you can change it like group A, group B, etc, etc, whatever name you would need to use in the model. And it will be changed across the full model. The next very important KPI, how much kids per one educator for this group. So it can be 10, for example, 20. 13 for example or any other KPI if you would need to use some other values. You have number of places in this group as well. It can be changed year over year. For example 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. We have different occupancy rates throughout the years. So you can say in the first year you have occupancy 50% for these places and the next year it will be 51. 53, 55, 59, for example. Additionally, you have billable days per month. In other words, how much days per month these groups will work. Let's say it's 22 days, for example, across all the years. And separately, you have the fee schedule for your groups. That how much money you will, you will take from one kid from this group in this particular time period. So set the price like 80 the next year for example you want to grow this price starting from I don't know February 21 so you can set $90 for example and you have additionally three placeholders or the price grows by years once you set up all the dashboard assumptions variable expenses wages fixed expenses and capex line items, you may see your core financials related to the revenue, BGA net profit, rating cash flow and cash, and see these KPIs on the charts on the dashboard. On the income statement tab, you may see the main profit and loss line items related to your business. You can see total revenue broken down by main five groups or categories of revenue. You can see total variable expenses, total salaries and wages, total fixed expenses. Each one also has the breakdown by categories which you may open and review. You may see the EBITDA, depreciation and amortization, EBIT, interest expense, net profit before tax, tax expense and as a result net profit after tax. On the cash flow tab you may see the breakdown of your cash flow by operating activities, by investing activities and financing activities. 
On the cash flow statement in direct methods, you may see the same operation, investing and financing activities, but in more collapsed form. On the balance sheet, you may see the current assets, which include cash and account receivable, all the non-current assets components, total liabilities broken down by current liabilities and non-current liabilities, and your equity. The summary of three statements you may find on the Financial Statement Summary tab, which consists of five years breakdown of PL, balance sheet, and cash flow. And additionally, you have to select some year here, and you may see the breakdown of specific year by months for the main categories of PL, main categories of balance sheet with some charts, and main categories of cash flow statement also broken down by months. On the financial charts tab, you can see two sets of charts, which is 24 months by month and 5 years by month. On the first set of charts, you may see the EBIT amount. On the next set of charts, you may see the EBITDA and the revenue by months for 2 years and 5 years. The next set of charts will show you the cash flow, which is broken down by operating activities, investing activities and financing activities. And on the last set of charts, you can see the cash balance, also broken down by months for 2 years and for the 5 years. On the KPI charts, you may see the main industry benchmarks, this comparison to your model, outputs on the first top chart, you may see the educators and total staff to compare if it grows proportionally. Additionally, you may see the occupancy chart and all the charts related to benchmark indices such as wages as a percentage of revenue, rent per license in place per month, average for cost occupancy, occupancy rate in potential revenue, occupancy rate in booked place per month, booked places makes up to 1% occupancy, average labor hour cost, labor hours per actual booked places, rent as a percentage of revenue, and profit as a percentage of revenue. For yellow sales, you are able to change the benchmark which works for your industry or region or country. For example, wages as a percentage of revenue, in your country 55% as a benchmark, so you may see on this chart it shows you industry wages and wages as a percentage of revenue for a particular model. You may see this comparison and you can compare how your business works in comparison to industry specific KPI. In terms of uh, gray values, just values you can review on the chart here, so you are not able to compare it with industry specific KPIs. And you may note that you have as a blue value values calculated by the model and as an orange value you have industry specific KPIs. On the top revenue tab you may see the breakdown of your revenue by five main streams or categories as well as a breakdown by years of absolute values and breakdown by years of percentage allocation. The same information you may see on the revenue summary charts, where you can see the percentage allocation and the absolute values breakdown by these main revenue streams. The next set of charts, which is revenue depths and monthly run rate, shows you the detailed year, which you can select and change here. In these charts you can see the revenue depths or breakdown of absolute values for the main five revenue streams. And on the pie chart, you may see the percentage allocation. On the revenue bridge chart, you may see the main revenue drivers of growth between these two years. These years are also changeable, so you may select the first year and the last year and see the main drivers of revenue growth broken down by these five revenue streams uh, between the first year and between the last year.
on the top expenses tab, you may find the breakdown of top four expenses categories and all other expenses collapsed into other category. You may see the breakdown of absolute values broken down by years with the total below. And also to the right, you may see the percentage breakdown of these expenses. The same information you may see on the charts below, which you may find the percentage breakdown and the absolute values breakdown. On the couple of charts below, you may find expenses depth and monthly run rate for selected year. You are able to change this year. And you may see the absolute values and percentage breakdown on the pie chart. On the expenses bridge, you may find the main drivers of expenses growth between these two years. These years are, are also changeable. So you may select the first year and you may select the last year. And you may see that total expenses starting in 2020 will change to total expenses in 2024 by this waterfall. On the break-even tab, you may find the calculation of revenue break-even level and break-even chart. For this particular, particular use case, you may find that your revenue break-even level is less than actual revenue calculation. This means that company is profitable. On the valuation tab, you may see the calculation of company valuation based on the cost of equity, which you may input here. Cost of loans you previously inputted in, on the dashboard. Calculation of resource share you may see here. There is also tax rate. And here you may find the weighted average cost of capital. In the valuation model, there is two valuation methods, which is EBGA multiple and revenue multiple. You may select one of them and below you may input multiple of methods. Based on this information, we can see terminal value, which is calculated on unlevered free cash flow. You may see the present value of unlevered free cash flow, NPV and multiplicator evaluation for this particular company. The color coding in the model is very simple. You may change any yellow cell in any yellow sheet within the model. This means that this yellow cell has some input, assumption or driver which impacts the calculation within the model. Blue sheets means that on these sheets there are some charts, reports and other information which can be useful for reporting purposes. On the tabs without color we have some extra calculations related to revenue, to debts, equity, inventory and everything which is needed for the report, reporting. Additionally, you have contents tab, which allow you to navigate across the model very simple. So you may click on any report and you can go back. It is broken down by reports, assumptions, statements and setup. There is short explanation about what each tab does. But if you want to know more, you can go to how to and to see more detailed, ex detailed explanation of what each tab does and what inputs you may find on this sheet and what kind of outputs you may find on, th on this sheet as well. Any header of this section is also clickable. So you may click on, for example, book assets and you go directly to this tab. On the wages tab, you have up to 20 placeholders to input your staffing assumptions. Please note that some gray values are already predefined and you already input these positions for educator, bus driver and cook on the dashboard with some higher and fire dates. For these positions you are able only input annual salary. In addition you have 16 placeholders which are yellow which you can change, for example manager, you can input higher date, it can be April 20 for example fire date, December 24, annual salary, it can be $35,000 and you have also number of employees by years, for example, first year it will be one, the next two, three, four and five. Below you may see the calculation, 
for this position. So manager will start in April. And next year you will have two managers, three, four and five till the end of the model. Separately, previously already input annual salary growth rate on the dashboard, but for these positions you can input payroll tax rate. 10%, for example, or 7%, or if you don't need, you can just clean these values here. Additionally, you have the calculation of annual salary, depends on the salary growth rate and starting annual salary. But you should input also workload, hours per month for each of the categories. The standard amount is something between 160 and 165 hours, but it can vary if it is part-time or in case of if it is driver, it can be half-time, which is 88 hours. All the calculation of staffing numbers, monthly pay salaries, monthly bonus, taxes rate, calculation of FTEs for these three categories you may see below. And separately on the income statement tab, you have total salaries and wages category, where you can see all your staff positions with the salaries, payroll tax and bonus broken down by months. On the fixed expenses tab, you have 15 line items or categories where you can set up your fixed expenses. Breakdown. Please note that you should change only yellow cells. The gray cells are connected to some specific places on the dashboard which you previously set up and it has specific calculation also, so please note that only yellow cells are changeable. Let me give you some examples of how this step works. So you may change the category, for example, I don't know, utilities, you can set the launch date, for example, February 20, you can see that it starts on February 20, you can set the last date, which can be October 23, for example. We double check that the final day for this utility category will be October 23. Additionally, you have ability to change the periodicity or the basis of calculation as well as spending. So, the spending you may change. Very easy, just put some amount. In terms of periodicity, you are able to set up different periodicities. If you will select one time, you will see just one payment. February 20. Obviously, you don't need end date in this case. It will be daily. It will calculate based on count of days in this period. For example, in February 20, you have 29 days and you have 29 thousands. In March, you have 31 day, 31 thousands, etc. etc. If you will select weekly, it will show you four payments each month. So, four multiplied by thousands. 4,000. If you will select BBQ, you will have two payments per month, which is 2,000. If you will select monthly, it will be 1,000. In quarterly, you will have 1,000 each quarter, starting from February. If you will select semi annually, you will have 1,000 each half a year. And the last option is yearly, you have 1000 once per year. Separately, you are able to set up some growth rates. So in this example, for example, I will set up 3%. This means that in one year, you will have $1,030 instead of $1,000. The same works for all the bases. So if I will select monthly, you will have $1,030 starting from January 21. You can change also different growth rates across the years, like 4%, 6%, and you will see that all your population will change accordingly. Separately, you can set up also rent, which is predefined to sell, but the amount is also changeable, and growth rates for the rent is also connected to the dashboard, that's why you should not change these gray cells. Once you set up all the fixed expenses, you may see them in income statement, total fixed expenses section, where you may see the breakdown by categories and by months as well.
on the variable expenses tab you can input your variable expenses as a percentage of total revenue let me show you how it works for example bank fees and your bank fees is 2.5 percentage of your revenue so in the same way as your revenue grows over time you may see that bank fees will grow as a percentage of this total revenue the same way you can input other variable expenses like for example 5% direct labor like 15% of total revenue and below you may see the calculation of these variable expenses by months so these expenses will be connected to the income statement tab section variable expenses and you may see these line items by months and break, broken down by expenses types. You may input up to 20 development expenses categories. Let me give you a couple of real examples. For example, this will be kitchen and other development expenses. You can input purchase date for each category, for example, February and March. You can input spending, $50,000, $10,000, for example. You can also use payment delay feature, which means that if you will sell it for the kitchen two months, you will pay in April for the kitchen, and for example, three months for other development expenses, which means that you will pay for it in June 20. The total amount of development expenses connected to the assets tab. You may see it here. By default, the useful time for development capex is five years. So you may see the calculation of depreciation and closing net book value. You are also able to input up to six other assets, for example, other capex with launch date, for example, June, with three years of usable time, with $5,000 cost. You may see the calculation here. So in this step, you have calculation of capital expenditure, book depreciation, and closing net book value. The total amounts you may see in income statement tab in depreciation section. For the cash flow, you can see the fixed assets capital expenditure, and in the balance sheet, you may see fixed assets, assets closing book value, and capex prepayments in case of real prepayment. Repay these amounts, and if you'll pay in some months after, you'll have capex payable. Because you set up two and three months payment delay, you may see that you have capex payable. I can also remove here or select zero months. In this case, capex payable will be zero, but you'll have just fixed assets, amounts broken down by months. Also on the top of the dashboard have debt assumptions. Let me show you how it works. So for the each debt, you are able to select the debt type. There are two debt types in the model, which is annuity and usual. Annuity means that each monthly payment, which consists your debt repayment plus interest expenses, will be equal each month. In case if you will select usual your main debt repayments will be equal parts and interest will be just interest on the debt's closing balance. Let me give you an example how it works. So you may input an amount of the debt, the launch date, term, the 60 months, and interest can be 5%. You may also input the grant, which is just simple amount which is paid in some specific months and that's it no repayments no terms in terms of interest so all the calculations of the debt you may see on the capital tab calculations for the debt number one debt number two debt number three total debts with grants these calculations impacts income statement interest expenses 
the cash flow. Interest paid, debt drawdowns, debt repayments, and on the balance sheet, we have the debt closing balance. On the capitalization table, you can input different founders and investors' contributions, broken down by different dates of funding, with different cost of share for each series, and you can see the dilution of shares after each round, and pre-money total equity and post-money total equity. Let's pretend that we have two founders, founder one, founder two. So total amount of shares for founder one can be 10,000, for founder number two, 20,000. Let's imagine that cost of share will be $2 and the date of founding is February. This means that investment for founder one is $20,000, for founder two is $40,000. In total, they invest $60,000, which you may see here. The dilution is 34, 33 to 67 percentage of shares. So let's pretend that for series A we have one investor and the date of issuance is May, cost per share is $5 per share and number of shares is 1000. So total amount of investment will be $5000. You may see that before the Series A total equity was $60,000, after $65,000 and Investor 1 will have 3.23 percentage of shares and the shares of Founder 1 and Founder 2 also diluted. 32.26 and 46.52 percentage. You can also input some amounts for Series B and Series C the same way you can set up the date, cost of share and up to 5 investors with up to 5 placeholders for number of shares. The amounts of funding you may see in the cash flow, in the ordinary equity risings and you may see the balance sheet which shows you the total equity by months. On the top of the dashboard you have currency denomination and taxes setup. So currency inputs means that you can input all your drivers for the model using one currency. You have currency outputs, it can be the same as currency inputs and it can be different from currency inputs. So let me give an example when you input in the United States dollars, you have euro as an output and for this case you can set up currency exchange rate this is 1.2 for example in this case you will have in the model all your inputs in United States dollars all your outputs in euros and there will be conversion rate between currency inputs and currency outputs additionally you have denomination which means that you can denominate all your outputs on the reports. In this example you have denomination is 1000, means that your outputs is denominated by 1000. You can select millions. You may see that now it is in million dollars. You can set also billions or without any denomination. Additionally you have corporate tax setup change this number and this will impact tax expenses in your income statement. I hope you enjoyed my video, thanks for reviewing this. Uh, you can find more on my website finmodelslab.com and we'll see you later in the next videos.